The goodness of the world does not exist within the wickedness, but it's the wickedness that exists within the good. Hello, it's August 2022, and I'm going to be talking about or referring to a movie called Apocalypse Now. Many people may have seen it, and if you haven't seen it, perhaps you might want to go watch it. It's a very dark movie about the Vietnam War, and there have been reviews about this movie with regards to the progress of the characters in the movie with regards to war, the art of war, the theater of war. However, this movie directly parallels civilization, society, the common person, as well as people in various positions of authority. And I've highlighted before, there are many types of positions of authority. It's not just necessarily governing bodies or law enforcement or anything else. It's, for example, encompasses professions. Now, before I get into this parallel, I'm going to share a little, a little bit about my life, my little journey, and it directly ties in with what I'm going to talk about in this parallel. In my youth, I was exposed, for example, to a lot of violence, violence physical and psychological, and how I ever, ever survived intact, well, I mean, or it could be argued, did I? I digress. When I was young, I was exposed to a lot of physical violence, for example, at school, being bullied and everything else, being beat up, and even in my home environment. And at some point in my youth, I decided to embrace that violence. I began studying, for example, martial arts and did Roman Greco wrestling and all sorts of different things which eventually evolved into as a descriptive paramilitary style of training and I embraced that which I did not like and that which I feared and I just want to make it very very clear I do not like violence never have never will but I became very good at it and I wanted to use that, for example, to help. Now, in a video of this past, I think, six months, I mentioned there was a time in public school, I believe I was in grade four, and we were doing floor hockey. And I knew nothing about hockey and sports or anything like that. And I was assigned to be um, like the defense. And I remember the teacher explained to me, your job is to protect. And that stuck with me for the rest of my life to this day. And I had to work within the boundaries of where a defense player can move and you know do whatever. And that's what I did. And from what I remember from public school, floor hockey, was pretty good at it. My goal was to protect the goalie and that's what I did. So my training, which I refer to my training days and so forth, my objective was to use those skills to protect. And eventually I tried to get into law enforcement, which I would have been successful, but I had one other person who had their own ideas on my life and I've talked about this in previous videos and I remember fast forwarding now many many years it was in the late 1990s I was at um, a, a party and I was talking with someone it was a female who I guess had some traumatic experiences physical and she had tried to study all these different martial arts and everything else and she just never found she, she always had that insecurity and that fear and I remember telling her she needs to find uh, peace through violence and I remember she was taken back by that statement peace through violence and I explained to her 
you're never going to have peace unless you accept the violence. Now, going back into the history part, I ended up working for, when I was doing, for example, personal and private uh, security type of work. And some of the people that I worked for were, or they had as a descriptive questionable uh, establishments. And I'm just going to stop here for a moment and I never realized at the time the negative impact that even being associated with these type of people and these, these environments would have that um, being stereotyped, but anyway. And I remember when I was being introduced into this world using my uh, training to protect we would refer to one particular place as the hole. And you couldn't get into deeper into the belly of the beast of society. And it was the hole. And in fact, it was like a black hole. Everything getting sucked in to that environment. And many people's lives were destroyed by their own doing. And I remember during that time saying that this is the world that actually exists and everything else exists within it. And there's a reason why I'm sharing all this. And to, to, to see all this firsthand and to walk away eye-opening now that's the physical violence part there's also the psychological part which I'm going to get into next then came for example my time in law and by no means is this a diss towards everyone in the legal profession overall. I'm just simply highlighting some facts here. And, and the primary focus with this is the injustice. And I was very much a part of that. And again, I found myself looking around saying, this is the world that actually exists and everything else exists within it. And then we have my progressing to, for example, meeting with and parting with very influential people of the world, world leaders and so forth. And I walked away from that. Now, there are some life lessons for myself, and I'm sharing this because there are life lessons that everyone can take from, and it ties into the movie Apocalypse now and society overall. Now, the movie Apocalypse now, there are actually four stages to this movie. The movie takes place on a river, that river being the journey of life. Now, the few reviews that have been done about this movie, talking about the river being the path throughout this war. But that river represents life. The first stop in this movie, they're on a beach, and there's a character by the name of Kilgore. And that whole segment revolves around the dehumanization of the enemy, real or perceived, and the disregard to the so-called enemy. The enemy also were innocent people, the farmers and stuff in Vietnam, and there was no distinguishing between, for example, the combative individuals to the farmer. Everyone was just getting slaughtered. So we have innocence being attacked. 
And as the characters, Martin Sheen's character, progresses down the river, the second stop is at what appears to be like uh, a big, huge party setting. Music and alcohol and drugs, and they had um, like Playboy bunnies there, and it was just chaos party type of environment. And what we see there is that transfer of dehumanizing the perceived enemy to them dehumanizing each other, where it became all about the individual experience with the partying and, and the Playboy bunnies and the music and everything else. Then we see the third stop, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was a bridge and as the progression down this river continued, the, the atmosphere became darker and gloomier and, and more wicked. And this bridge stop was, as a descriptive, the insanity, the loss of, or the beginning of the loss of, self-respect, the dehuman, dehumanization of self through insanity. And the fourth stop on this journey in this river was the destination where Martin Sheen's character was to assassinate Marlon Brando's character. And we see here how there was a conflict between these two individuals, although they were the same character. One was on one side of the fence and the other was on the other side, both seeing themselves as a descriptive righteous in what they're doing. Throughout this whole movie, this war was being justified but as we see the progression, the justification became more skewed. Now, I just briefly went over a summary of this movie. Now you're wondering, okay, so what does that have to do with my story as well as society overall? Society being you, your life. Why is all this important? Because you need to understand the world. If you have no understanding of the world, then you're going to be a victim of it as a descriptive. So what we see in society, for example, that first stop, the dehumanization of others. Now it could be um, a group, it could be political, it could be just about anything. Can even relate to, for example, what's what's been going on since 2020, the separation of people, the lack of respect, which I've talked about, and what we see is society pointing the finger. When we hit that second stop, the party, and the, I guess you can call it the distraction, but we'll also see now that they've turned on each other. Society has been there as well. Parting, distraction, turning on each other, worrying about self. And this is where we get into, in today's world, self-glorification. And we have even belief systems supporting that, saying that, you know, you can manifest your own reality and, and you're like gods and everything else. and no, just people. But we see that parallel in society, civilization. We see that third stop at this bridge where we see society going insane. People realize there's something wrong in the world. They can't see it, they can't touch it, they can't taste it, but it's there. Something that I talked about 15 years ago 
actually even before that, but I'm just going back to when I started making more of a online presence I talked about in videos 12, 10 years ago, the invisible foe. Now, the invisible foe can encompass a lot of different things. For example, debt, monetary debt, the debt slave can't see it. It doesn't really exist. It's the perception. And you have to accept it. And that stress of always trying to keep up. Now I'm just going to stop here for a moment. When I revolutionized the debt recovery world using litigation, and primarily that is using sheer volume, I've talked about this specifically in a few videos and my contribution bringing back as a descriptive uh, debtor prison using contempt and when you go through these stages you don't see as a descriptive the evil the wickedness that you are you're doing it just slowly grows and I've talked about this in recent videos the invisible foe the insanity a lot of people are suffering psychological issues now because of this invisible foe this war of attrition it's been going on for a very long time and I've talked about over the past few years this war of attrition endure and survive as long as you can as best you can without compromising yourself we see that parallel with the movie apocalypse now in society in that fourth stage now this is key now where we have martin sheen's character going to assassinate marlon brando's character and why is this key because these are two individuals that has that have gone through and experienced in the movie the atrocities of war. They embraced it while still maintaining some level of who they are, their sanity. They weren't consumed by whatever. Now, these are the people and say, for example, in today's world and civilization, where they become people in various positions of authority. The insanity that surrounds, that's being imposed in the world by some sort of evil, wicked force, or whatever you want to call it, they survived and they're dealing with it. They become that which they perhaps don't like and become good at it. Now when you look at that first stage with that character uh, Kilgore, he is someone that never experienced defeat and for him that whole existence there was a party. Never experiencing defeat. And because he never experienced defeat, he embraced it all. We see this, for example, I'm just using this as an example, with various governing bodies, law enforcement, courts, and everyone else, where they are in positions where They'll never lose. There's no repercussions for anything that they've done wrong. And this builds up their ego. This is a big problem now. And this is key. A handful of people go through all these different stages that I'm paralleling with the movie Apocalypse Now 
in society, civilization, and they get through. Now they're ones in control. My journey in my life, I've gone through all those stages. However, for some reason, I did not become, for example, the characters that Martin Sheen played and Marlon Brando played. My core is still to try to help, to protect, and perhaps this is what I've been trying to do all along. Not just with, for example, whistleblowing and exposing the sex trade agency, worldwide sex trade agency in the late 1990s or even what's been going on in, for example, the city of Calgary in the province of Alberta. I continue to try to, to help, protect, share. A lot of what I say, well, I've had actually a lot of people over the years say that they get what I'm saying, but it goes over most people's heads. I've even had a few say that what I'm saying is ahead of, ahead of the time. Whatever. I've never said or implied that I'm anyone special. I'm just trying to share some insight so you have an understanding of the world. And when you can see these different stages, for example, as paralleled with the movie Apocalypse Now with society, you have a better understanding. And when you have a better understanding, you're better prepared. Better prepared to deal with what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen. You're better prepared to deal with others. You're better prepared to deal with yourself. And that's important deal with yourself. Hopefully I've given you some things to think about. I'm trying to, there's a lot more I, I want to say and, and make a lot more connections and everything else, but I mean, I'm trying to not make these videos you know, feature length film, you know, like two hours long, I'm trying to keep this as short as possible. But I've shared parts of my journey in my life which kind of parallels the movie Apocalypse Now with a different ending. I've drawn the parallel between society and the movie Apocalypse Now. That river is life. And these stops that we see, these four stops in this movie, we've seen society, civilization go through, and still going through. Things to think about. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I think a lot of them are just stone cold. You know, there's no emotion, and they don't view people as people anymore. And it's just, you almost feel like you're literally living in the Twilight Zone. And you feel like you're the only sane one in a bunch of insane people. And it's up to the point where I'm afraid that I'm going to start thinking that this is normal. <laughs> I don't want to ever get to that point. There's good people. But they're outnumbered. There's good people, but they're outnumbered. There's good people, but they're outnumbered. There's good people, but they're outnumbered. I mean, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. Like, something's not right. Because it's like going in the fucking twilight zone. Like, everyone here is okay with this. Listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it. You're never going to outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. I hear people saying to me, oh, when is it going to get easier? When you die.